Yo, what's up everyone? Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on to the next question. We have to find the coordinates where the slope of the tangent on this function, square root of 2x minus 1, is equal to 1 over 3. So the coordinates on that specific function. So what we have to do when we're doing a question like this, so we know the slope of the tangent that we're looking for. So what we have to do is we have to find a general expression for the slope of the tangent for this function. And then we have to find at what x values does that expression equal this 1 over 3. Now another way that this question could have been presented as a heads up, it could have said find the coordinates where the slope of the, or where the tangent is parallel to some kind of line having a slope of 1 over 3. That's another way this could have been worded. Or it could have been find the coordinates where the tangent on this function is perpendicular to a line that would have a slope of negative 3. So then the perpendicular slope to negative 3 would be the negative reciprocal of this, which would be 1 over 3. So then we'd be finding when does the slope of the tangent on this function equal 1 over 3. So a lot of different ways that this question could have been presented, just as a heads up. But in this case, they just ask when does the slope of the tangent on this function equal 1 over 3. So what we're going to do, we're going to find the general expression for the slope of the tangent using the difference quotient like we did in the previous example. So we'll have the limit as h approaches 0. Now f of a plus h, we'd plug in a plus h for the x value like that. Then we're going to be subtracting f of a, so we'd have 2a minus 1, and that would be all over h, like that. And before we simplify this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to expand this. So I'll have the square root of 2a plus 2h minus 1 minus the square root of 2a minus 1 all over h, like that. So what we have to do now, we have to try to get rid of this h in the denominator as usual. And we've dealt with square roots before. Basically what we got to do here is we got to rationalize this. So we would multiply it by 2a plus 2h minus 1. But then we would change this sign here in the middle. Like that. All right, but what we do to the top, we also have to do to the bottom. So it's like we're taking this expression, multiplying it by 1, keeping it the same, just adding more onto it. And what that allows us to do is over here, we're taking this, multiplying it by its conjugate, so we just have to multiply the ends together. So we would multiply this by that, which would give us, um, which would give us 2a plus 2h minus 1. Right, the square root of that expression times the square root of that expression, they're the same expression, so it would just be that expression. Minus, plus minus, that would be minus, in brackets this times that would give us 2a minus 1. And that's going to be all over h times, I'm going to keep these two expressions separate, like that. And so now what happens is uh, notice that there's going to be a bunch of stuff that cancels out at the top. Notice that when we distribute that negative inside the bracket, we'll have minus 2a plus 1. So this 2a, this 2a cancel out, this negative 1, and then this is going to end up being a positive 1. Those would cancel out as well. So we would just be left with 2h at the top over h times this expression is still staying the same like that. Notice these h's now cancel out, which is what we were trying to do. We we're trying to get rid of this h in the denominator. So now we could plug in 0 for the remaining h's, which is just this h over here. So we would end up with 2 over the square root of 2a minus 1 plus the square root of 2a minus 1. Notice that these are like terms. There's a 1 in front here, 1 in front there. So we could add those coefficients. Uh, let's do it over here. 
So we could add these two, so we would end up with 2 over 2 root 2a minus 1. All right, that's how you add radical terms, and then notice that these 2s would cancel out. So we're just left with a 1 up top. So basically, the slope of the tangent on this function generally is just equal to that. Right, so this here gives us the slope of the tangent for this function at any x value. We could plug it in for that a value. However, what we're trying to do is find the x value where the slope of the tangent is equal to 1 over 3. We're already given the slope. So we got to solve this equation. What we could do, we could cross multiply here. So we'd have the square root of 2a minus 1 equals 3. This times that, this times that. Then we could square both sides. So we'd have 2a minus 1 equals 9, bring the 1 over, 10, divide both sides by 2, a is equal to 5. So that's the x value on this function where the slope of the tangent is going to be 1 over 3. They want the full coordinate. They didn't just ask for the x value, so we got to find f of 5. We would plug in 5 for the x value. We'd end up with uh, 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1, which is 9. And then we'd have the square root of 9, which is 3. So the coordinate is 5 and 3. That's the final answer. So at this coordinate, on this function, the slope of the tangent is going to equal that 1 over 